Hey guys, welcome to Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips. Today's video is all about picking the Cincinnati Picker. Hey guys, that clip I just showed you is my buddy Ryan. I actually met him, I think it's been two or three weeks ago now. And he reached out to me to look at the storage units. He ended up buying a whole bunch of books to resell. And he's got a YouTube channel that he started pretty recently. And I wanted to point it out to you guys because Ryan has a specialty in media. CDs, vinyl, cassettes, books, just like all kinds of media. And he knows the stuff really well. And media is something I'm always trying to learn more about because it is regularly available. I see it at garage sales all the time. And I don't think enough resellers are buying it to make some good money. So I wanted to share his channel. I've really enjoyed watching his videos. I think you guys might too. So I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check it out. All right, today is Wednesday, July 1st. I have zero eBay orders to ship out because I have not been listing that much. So I'm going to do some listing today. I've got some garage sale leftovers I still need to take to Goodwill. And I'm meeting up with somebody later today to buy some bobbleheads. So let's get to work. All right, first thing I'm listening today is some golf clubs. I got these at a garage sale, what's it been? Three weeks now, I think. It is three clubs, they're all Cobra. I paid 20 bucks for them. This one is new in the plastic. It is a sand wedge with a graphite shaft. This is a driver, also with a graphite shaft, 11 and a half degree, which is a pretty high loft. And a putter. A couple things I will point out to you guys when you're listing golf clubs, um, always make sure you put the dexterity in the title and you have it correct in the item specifics. Um, so this is right-handed, so you gotta make sure it's RH, make sure you put that in there. And when it comes to drivers, make sure you have the loft in there, it's an 11 and a half degree. I always make sure I take pictures of the face, take pictures of the, of the top part of this and that. I'm just trying to get as many pictures as I possibly can. And when you have graphite shafts, whether it is a driver or an iron, you want to make sure that you show the flex. Uh, that is like basically how much give the shaft has to it. Um, this is an R flex, so that means regular. Uh, there's stiff, senior flex, ladies flex, there's all kinds of different flexes. So just something to make sure that you include when you're listing it, not only in the title and the description, but also the item specifics because if you don't have that in there, then you might not make the sale. Or if you have something wrong in there, you could have an upset buyer. I actually made a video about two years ago where I did a deep dive into golf clubs, what to look for, good brands to sell, just like tips and tricks basically. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll put a link down in the description below. All right, next thing I'm listing is a huge box of Pez. My dad gave me a whole lot of these and I put them all in the garage sale. At least I thought I put them all in the garage sale, but I guess this box is still left over. Pens are not worth a whole lot. If you find some that don't have the feet, some of the older ones, those could be worth some money, but besides that, they're just not worth much. And I think I'm just gonna do an auction with these uh, because I'm really not even sure to like have a guesstimate of what they're worth. Maybe 20 bucks. I think there's about 75 of them in here, so. I think I'm going to do an auction, take a lot of pictures, and see if I can get a couple people in the bidding more. All right, I'm taking a little bit of a break from listing, and I'm going to open up this box right here. I actually got this in the mail, I think it's been over a week ago. I'm going to tear it open and show you guys what's in there. This is from my buddy Dave, the Tesla picker. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about Dave. He's had a channel now for, I think it's been maybe three months, and it is just really entertaining, informative. I've watched all of his videos, I really enjoy him. He's down in Louisville, and he put a video out, it's been like six or seven weeks, and he was showing this big buy he made with a lot of stuff, and I saw that he had a bunch of records in there. And as you guys probably know, I really like selling records in my antique booth. So Dave didn't have much into these, probably, I don't know, $20, $30. It was part of a bulk buy, so it's probably hard to break down how much he's got into these. But when I saw his video, I messaged him right away and I said, hey man, I'd love to buy these from you. I'll give you 150 bucks. And he said, that's cool with me. We shipped them out. And since they went media mail, I don't think they were too expensive. Look at that, that is a huge stack of records. All right, we got REO Speedwagon, Boston, Kiss, 
Beatles White Album, The Who, another Who, Beach Boys, Police, another Police, Cheap Trick, Pink Floyd, Steve Miller Band, The Stones, Steppenwolf, The Who, Pretenders, another Stones, Boomtown Rats, never heard of them, Foreigner, Billy Joel, Oh, there's a good one, Jethro Tull. Dave, I really appreciate the deal on the records. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to Dave's channel, I highly recommend checking it out. It's the Tesla Picker. I'll put a link down below in the description. All right, I'm headed to Goodwill to drop off all these garage sale leftovers. And then I am going to try to find some boxes because I'm really low on boxes and I've got a spot that I like to hit where the cardboard dumpsters seem to always have really good boxes. So we're gonna go check that out. they're not taking furniture I had one chair but he said they can't take it I don't know if that's because of you know precautions for COVID-19 or what if you know they think things can like transfer on fabric but and I wonder if that's like every Goodwill around the country or just Cincinnati I also heard that the Cincinnati Goodwills aren't selling toys anymore they're done with toys so I'm curious like if you guys have been to some Goodwills in your area let me know uh, you know what's changed <laughs> if if they're uh, just all doing this during the pandemic and then it's gonna go back to normal or if they're just like done selling some of these categories. All right, first stop is Barnes & Noble. I always seem to pull good boxes out of here. And today is no exception. Yeah, there's a bunch in here. I'll peek in their dumpster while we're here. Mm, doesn't look like anything good in there. All right, next is a pet store. Let's see what they got. Some dog food that they tore up. No boxes. What is this? Nice display case. Looks like there was glass here at some point, but the rain has just totally ruined this thing. All right, lastly is Bath and Body Works. We've got these new dumpsters, and you can't even open them unless this side opens, maybe. This is closed. Huh. Well, guess I'll just pull some of these out. That's a bummer. This has always been one of my favorite stops. Pretty good little haul boxes. I think I got at least 30 or 40. It's Thursday afternoon. I am back from the garage sales and I got a couple eBay orders to ship out. Just two today. First are these uh, white ceramic pool knobs. Um, a lot of 25, these sold for $29.99 free shipping. And next is this wedge that I just listed yesterday. This is a Cobra XL Speed sand wedge with a graphite shaft. I think I've got six or seven dollars into it as part of a bulk buy. It sold for $29.99 plus shipping. Friday afternoon, I'm back from the garage sales. Got a handful of eBay orders to ship out and first two are right here. So this Cobra driver, picked this up at a garage sale. I think it's been three weeks now. Uh, it was a bundle deal, so I think I've got seven bucks into it. This sold for $39.99. Plus shipping. I got this Cobra Putter at the same sale, and I probably got seven dollars into this as well. This was new with the plastic, had the head cover and everything. This sold for $39.99 plus shipping. Okay, next thing is a bumper sticker right over here. This sold for $9.99 free shipping. That bumper sticker sold to a viewer named Kyle who goes by Retro Express Thrift on YouTube. Kyle, thank you for the support. And if you guys want to check out his channel, I'll put a link down below in the description. All right, next is in C2. I actually sold a number of things out of here. First is this Ken Griffey Jr. bobblehead. I just picked this up yesterday at a garage sale. I've got close to $6 into it. It sold for $14.99 plus shipping. This is going out to a viewer named Paul who was obviously a Reds fan. So Paul, thank you for the business and go Reds. All right, next thing also going out to a viewer is this Star Trek Starfleet manual. Uh, I got this at the same sale as the bobbleheads, actually. I paid a dollar for this. It sold for $16.99, free shipping. You were named Peter about this. Peter, thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. Okay, next is this Pokemon game uh, manual. I, I like finding these because I do pretty well with them. Uh, I only paid a dollar for this, and it sold for $13.99, free shipping. Before I end this video, I want to answer a couple of viewer questions. First is from Brett Frankhauser. By the way, the neighbors are shooting off fireworks, so if you guys 
hear that noise that's what that is i apologize brett says would love to know the tags you use on the records for your antique boots also do you wrap them in plastic or buy bags for them thanks as always so what i do with my records is i buy vinyl record sleeves i get them on ebay get them by like the packs of like a hundred and i want to say they're like I don't know, twenty dollars for a pack of hundred or something like that, and then my antique booth, they sell us stickers, so we can do like the like the stick labels, or we can do the hang tags, and I think they sell them for like hundred of them for five bucks or something like that. So I put them in the vinyl sleeve, then I put the sticker on the plastic sleeve instead of the actual cover itself, so that there's no damage to it. I highly recommend using those sleeves. If you guys are selling records you don't want to put a sticker right on the cover because collectors hate that it's a pain to get off and a lot of times it's just going to damage it so if you're interested in those i'll put a link down in the description below next is from joe Terra. hey john what do you do on the off season i'm new to the channel and have been yard selling for years but would love to do it more full time any advice so it used to be in the off season that i would do thrift stores a lot but after doing it for so long i just wasn't getting enough stuff to make it worth my while i was spending way more time hitting all the thrift stores and trying to source as opposed to like what i was getting back in return of like good inventory to sell so i stopped doing that uh, i started doing a lot of auctions live auctions online auctions and here in the last year or two i've been doing a lot of bulk buys i've had a lot of people reach out to me with a lot of collections that they're selling so i did a ton of bulk buys this last winter and fall that really helped me out in the downtime of garage sale season because garage sales definitely my number one source to find stuff and the best roi hands down advice for you i would say just try to network as much as possible the more connections you can get the more it'll help you i've made a lot of multiple repeat buys from the same people where like i'll buy from them once i build that good relationship and then months down the road they'll randomly text me and say hey i've got a bunch more stuff if you're interested and i found so much good inventory that way next is from emma shea how often do people send best offers that you do not accept i'd say i accept about 50 percent of the offers that i get most of them are pretty reasonable and i'm trying to sell the stuff usually when i turn best offers on something it means i've had it for a while and I'm, you know i need to move it so i don't know if somebody sends me an offer that's like 60% or more of what I'm asking, I usually take it. Okay, last is from Robert. While sourcing hats, what's the price range you pay for them? I really don't like to pay more than a dollar a hat if they're used. I can typically find them for a quarter, 50 cents, something like that. And it's rare that somebody's asking more than a dollar. But if they're new, I might pay three or four dollars depending on the hat. But yeah, used hats, I'd say on average I might get $15 for them, sometimes more if there's something special. So I like to be around that dollar range for them. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.